Welcome everybody you for joining. I'm Zane Murfitt. It's great to uh, share some time with you here today. Uh, we're talking about sales analytics and how we do this at Tableau, and I couldn't be more excited to, to share some of the wins that we've had around uh, pipeline management, just sales art productivity, and some of the ways we've been able to drive a uh, better partnership with marketing. Uh, this is recorded today, so we're going to go kind of fast. I know 30 minutes is a big ask, so uh, we're going to talk uh, about a lot of different examples. So uh, if you feel like you missed something, there's definitely an opportunity to come back and revisit it. Um, this is me. If you see me walking the streets of uh, Seattle, feel free to stop me and say hello. Uh, we're probably the only Zane at Tableau, so easy to find on LinkedIn. Uh, I've been at Tableau for about six years. Um, when I started at Tableau, if you'd asked me what SQL was, I would have said to what movie. Uh, didn't have a technical background at all. I was actually selling advertising before Tableau. Um, and the reason I'm so excited today to share this stuff with you is I feel like uh, my entire career has been changed by my use of Tableau. It's made me a different worker. It's allowed me to capitalize on ideas that I couldn't before. And I really didn't think of myself as a data person when I started at Tableau. Uh, but if you would have asked me if I had any ideas on how to improve a process, uh, I would have had a ton of those. And so uh, my hope is that um, you're inspired by what you see today. And whether you're just getting started on this journey or you've been doing it for a long time, uh, that you feel like there's something for you to take away from a philosophical perspective of how we approach this and also a, a content example perspective. So we're going to go over our platform. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of, of how uh, a workflow we leverage quite a bit as sales leaders on big deal uh, management. And then we're going to go through a series of examples of how our sales ops team, sales leaders, and our direct sellers actually leverage our platform. And we have a ton of resources at the end uh, to help you get started. Everything I'm going to show you today is all available to download out of our Tableau Public uh, sales analytics page. And you can go in and reverse engineer it apply your data to it if you like any of the examples that you see. So none of this is like live Tableau data. These are all kind of dummy data examples, but the concepts are the same as around what we actually use here internally. Uh, so I don't know how familiar many of you are with Tableau, but we are all about our mission statement of helping people see and understand data. And if you've been using Tableau for a long time or you're just getting started, at, at some point you're going to have to either ask yourself or explain to somebody, how is this different from the multitude of other platforms out there? And what we would say is it's those people um, behind those words. Uh, their journey of using data to be effective and be productive is way different in Tableau, and that journey has allowed them to drive an insane amount of impact in their organizations. And so we have about 550,000 people that are involved in Tableau's community. Uh, we span about 80,000 customers, and uh, what that hopefully means for you is there's a lot of people who have done this before who have good ideas. We're an extremely collaborative community. I mean, we have folks that are teaching their kids how to use Tableau. You know, there's a whole like data kids movement. Um, there's also a hashtag on Twitter called My Tableau Voice where uh, customers were sharing how they felt like Tableau had finally given them a voice in their organization. And I really feel uh, that I can actually relate to that in terms of what I'm going to share with you today of how I use Tableau and some of the things I've been able to create as an end user. Um, but we are all about people, um, and that's one of the reasons I love working here. Um, slide is getting hung up. There we go. Okay. So uh, these are some of our customers. So if you're also wondering kind of, all right, is Tableau just for sales teams? Um, if you're using data, we can probably help you. Um, and it's really fun at Tableau to see people's careers transform. Um, and the only reason that these logos are here is because we've been able to empower the individual, right? We've been able to uh, help people in a way that they uh, you know, weren't able to do their job before coming to Tableau. And so um, there's customer stories from Tableau Conference from most of these folks. So if you uh, go to our, Tableau, our YouTube page, there's tons of examples of how these customers are being successful um, and you know, tons of opportunities for you to kind of take away different learnings from that. Um, before we get into examples, this is the Tableau platform. So we can be embedded in things like Salesforce or in an external application. Like that's probably our fastest growing use case is customers embedding Tableau in their product to expose it to their own customers to drive more value for them. Uh, it can be leveraged on a mobile device, a web browser. We have a desktop application. Really strong commitment from our dev team around governance, around data prep, data access. Uh, you can deploy it on Windows, Linux, Mac. It's very flexible. Uh, our dev team just rocks. Just 
you know, if, if you're still getting to learn Tableau, our dev team is just crazy impressive in terms of the pace that they can uh, you know, update the product and the innovations that, um, that they've been able to create. Uh, under the hood, VizQL is like the foundational thing that turns uh, Tableau into this real incredible invention. It's called Visual Query Language. Uh, it removes the need to code and script when you're doing analysis. And then we've kind of built the rest of the platform around uh, that in order to help people do things with data much faster than they could before. Okay, so um, we're actually uh, going to talk a little bit here about um, how our sales team, or no, actually, sorry, we are uh, got tripped up there. So we're going to actually share um, an example of uh, a workflow that we leverage here at Tableau. So I wanted to start with this um, to help you go through, like, okay, how do I actually use this to drive engagement? Because Gartner says that 70 to 80% of BI projects fail, never leave the pilot phase because they don't have buy-in from the business. And I think most executives, most leaders, they never want to have to say, I don't know. And they never want to have to say, I don't know how to deploy my team. So I want to walk you through how we uh, leverage Tableau to address both visibility uh, into what you need to focus on, and then how do we drive maximum action uh, when we, once we have that visibility. So this is Tableau Server. This tree map is showing the size of our large deals that we've won in the past. Down here is our the account history of transactions. The size of the bubble is how large the purchase was. And this is the running total for this account. And then these are our open pipeline deals. So one of the really uh, you know, special things about Tableau is subscriptions. So we use subscriptions heavily at Tableau where our sales ops team will subscribe us to various dashboards or we subscribe the, to ourselves where you get a little screenshot that's delivered to you to kind of check in on whatever's happening, um, you know, on whatever dashboard that you're, you're, you're focused in on. And so if I were to select uh, that image, it just takes me straight out to Tableau Server to this dashboard, and I can start to actually interact with it. So if I were to uh, be looking at this particular bit of analysis, maybe I don't care about this uh, segment of opportunities. I actually want to uh, lower the segment a little bit um, to something that is more kind of my, my team's focus area. So I'm going to adjust these filters. You know, I can slide this bar around if I want. You can see these all adjust. So as a sales leader, I want to understand, okay, what were some of the elements or consistent behaviors of our prior closed one deals? So if I select into this one that was closed by Jamie Data, I can see it follows this pattern, small purchases, big purchase. If I go into another one of Jamie Data's deals, I can see small purchase leading to a big purchase. So I'm starting to pick up on kind of a pattern here um, that we see where there's usually at least some kind of engagement before they really go big with us. Okay, so I'm kind of getting an understanding of how do our customers typically buy. Well, if I go and compare that to some of our open deals, I notice something that's kind of concerning. Uh, these opportunities for Eric, there's no prior purchases. So when I click through these, it's you know looking like maybe these are a little bit at risk. I mean, I even noticed this for uh, one that's at the solution phase and one that Eric is actually committing. Uh, when I compare that, though, to this opportunity from Dennis, I notice this opportunity is actually following that pattern that we like to see, smaller purchases leading to that bigger buy. So now the question becomes, well, how can I actually drive action and impact with this insight and finding? Well, in Tableau, there's a ton of resources around, you know, saving a view, setting an alert, subscribing to it, uh, or sharing it. In this case, though, I want to just comment on this. So I open up the comment window, I click this icon, and that grabs a snapshot of this. And then uh, I'm going to do this to myself um, versus, you know, in real world, I would do it to maybe the, the rep and their manager. And I'm going to say, hey, like, um, can we sync up uh, on these opportunities? I want to make sure um, we've got the right resources in place. Forgive my typo there. It's probably more real world than anything. Uh, so now what um, is going to be delivered to my inbox here shortly is an actual email that will have that comment and a link directly to this dashboard that also um, has it pre-filtered to that particular uh, finding. So you can see in here, I've already received it kind of instantaneously. Hey, can we sync up on these opportunities? I want to make sure we've got the right resources in place. So when you think about how to drive adoption, if you pick the right use case, and then you allow me to go from visibility to driving action, 
that's really where the richness of this is and how you can drive that adoption with your sales leaders. Um, it's all about how do you empower me to make sure my team's focusing on the right areas and then how are we focusing on the most strategic pieces of our business. Um, so this dashboard is available in the Tableau for Sales Analytics pu profile, uh, public profile page. You can download it, test it out, edit it to fit it to kind of however you want. Um, so let's transition back into kind of how our sales team more broadly uses our platform. Um, I think a lot of the success that we've had as a company is because of how we use Tableau. But I also, uh, and that's because we're, we're not all that different, I think, from other companies in terms of the common challenges we were running into when I started uh, at Tableau. We, we were using our platform, but we were still uh, getting better or learning how to leverage you know, simple things like our data governance features and data server. So um, a lot of the things we run into for, with customers or that we've seen ourselves is analysis is slow. Uh, everyone has their own numbers, like how many of you uh, sales ops folks know your VP directors have those side Excel lists? Who knows if the numbers are right? And uh, when we show up to meetings and we say, and we argue over what whose number is right, we never take ownership for that. We usually just run and go blame you. Um, you know, sales leaders are forced to just react on gut, gut instinct. And then sellers are actually wasting a ton of time uh, trying to find things that are worthwhile for them to focus on. So feedback we've gotten overwhelmingly from customers and that we've seen internally is we have a pretty compelling point of view and story on all of these issues. So if you're running into any of them or all of them, uh, there's a chance that we might be able to help you. So let's focus first on um, how our sales ops team actually uses Tableau. Uh, they put a ton of content out to provide self-service resources. Their main goal is trying to improve our sales team's efficiency and performance. And then they do a lot of advanced analytics for us uh, to, you know, on things like territory development. Uh, so I want to share a couple of these examples that are live on the Tableau Public page. So I'm going to zoom in on this because I think it's maybe a little hard to see. Uh, so this looks at just our general quota attainment. So if you're trying to think through, like, hey, how do we just provide a uh, scalable, automated way to demonstrate attainment so that it's not some manual process that you have to update all the time? Uh, this is one of the ways to do that. At Tableau, a huge part of our sales culture is we call it going green, where your bar turns from gray to green once you surpass whatever your quota is. So there's a ton of functionality here. Like if we drilled into this central region, we can see on the right that uh, there's 11 people in this region, about five of them are hitting quota. It's about 45% of the region. And 79% of our sales are by the quota hitter. So that whole 80-20 rule is actually applying here. Now the way that we would use this is, can we facilitate a conversation between Donna and Susan to figure out, hey, what did Donna do to get over her quota that or Susan, rather, that Donna could potentially borrow. Or if we zoomed out and we wanted to understand, hey, let's have Richard maybe lead a training here on what he's doing to you know, crush his number so, in, in such an impressive fashion. So if we're, uh, you know, I believe that a KPI is worthless unless it drives action, unless it prompts something else for you to do. So uh, if you're in sales ops and you're managing quotas and you're also trying to you know, cut territories. So this is an example. Uh, let me zoom out here to... Uh, there you go. So this is an example of a dashboard we use that analyzes uh, how we're setting territories. I've gotten feedback from uh, customers, and I would agree with uh, feedback from myself of using this, that this has taken the territory planning process from a uh, weeks, months exercise down to a few days uh, often, where and, and that's really because of how we can use groups uh, when you're leveraging Tableau Desktop. So it's just a feature within our software that allows you to combine or separate very various fields on the fly. So when I'm trying to set a new territory for a new hire, uh, I can get real-time feedback. And so when you think about like uh, the speed or amount of time it takes for you to just feel confident, uh, this significantly reduces the amount of time it takes for you to feel confident in the decisions you're making around territory optimization. So this has pretty rich stuff around highlighting. The left side here shows the individual territories and what their score are, is. The right side of the map shows the overall like index or score. Um, we can see what the ideal index is per territory versus reality. We can see if there's a delta that we have to be worried about. How many sales were done in the last 24 months? How many numbers of customers are in each territory? How many lifetime transactions have there been? So all of this is sortable, right? So if we're trying to kind of come through and say, hey, who has, where are the most customers? You know, we can see we have the most customers in Southeast and in Texas. And then we can go through and start to adjust these parameters. Uh, 
So this is, again, trying to get you out of needing to write really complex calculations or complex queries as you're going through this process. What I love about it personally is you just get real-time feedback as you're adjusting any of these parameters so that you can figure out how to create uh, the most equitable territories to try to drive you know, good impacts for the folks that are actually directly selling. Um, so let's take a look then um, at how our sales leaders use Tableau. Um, this is something that I'm pretty passionate about, primarily because when I started uh, at Tableau as a manager, there's a couple of dashboards I want to share you that I feel like kind of saved my career as leaders, <laughs> as a leader, um, in terms of making me not want to just quit being a leader. Uh, and so th uh, the big things with this, right, is all about how do we create visibility so we don't have to say, I don't know. Like one of the worst things that I have ever have to say in a meeting is, yeah, I don't know why my pipeline shrank or I don't know why it went up. Or I don't know why that deal moved in or out of, of the month or quarter. And so um, that's what these next two examples, their primary focus is on. So this particular dashboard um, we use internally. This is dummy data in here. Um, and this one has, this, this dashboard is uh, it's like, it's like one of my favorite ones. I almost get kind of emotional talking about it. When I started um, as a manager, trying to forecast my team's business was really hard. I had never forecasted for other people. I would spend sometimes three or four hours a week on my forecast trying to get it right and really stressed out about it. And this dashboard provides some models for us that we can use. And I, this has taken my forecast time a, per week down to like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and it's significantly improved my forecast accuracy. So let me walk you through what this is and how we use it. On the top, these are the stages we use internally for our opportunity. So mutual interest, discover, validate, decide, select, and commit. Um, we have a amount of the opportunities, and then the expected value is a percentage we take off of each stage. This is our total open and total closed one. A really hard part for me when I first started out was understanding this concept of like unseen revenue. So, you know, it's February 7th. Um, everybody on this call who's part of a sales team, chances are you are going to open and close opportunities from this day forward in the quarter that you just don't have visibility into yet. You're going to open up an opportunity tomorrow. So how do you actually forecast that, right? We can't just have our forecast be only the opportunities we have open. So this provides a historical reference looking at each quarter, and then the color of the bar is how much we've done in each month of the quarter. And so this gives me an, a sense of uh, what should we expect to do from this day, so this dashboard's day 32, uh, to the end of the quarter. And I can kind of look at that and get a sense for how our business is trending, and then enter in what I would commit for Unseen, what I think is likely to happen, and what I think is our best case scenario. And that adds into the model. Down here, we look at more of our transactional opportunities. So for your team, maybe that's uh, every opportunity below $10,000 a year or below $2,000 a year. It could be below $100,000 a year. You can customize this and enter this in to, to choose what it is. Um, well, the way we approach forecasting is we just take the expected value of whatever that bar is for your team and we add that into the total number. And then every deal over that that's above the transactional you know, um, line, we forecast at commit likely in best case. And we take percentages of those opportunities and apply that into that overall rollup. And these are just opportunities that you want to call out that you think you can accelerate or need help with. What this does is it puts all those numbers together and it gives us a commit likely in best case. And the icon here is are you 95% or less of quota? Are you on target to hit? Or are you going to overachieve? When you hover over these icons, it breaks down how much it is applying to kind of each segment of the model. Um, internally, we even have a bit more detail so you can understand how, why it's rolling that up. And this is all customizable to the salesperson or sales rep by entering in whatever your quota or goal is. So I just adjusted the number, and you see now if our quota is 300 versus 350, uh, we are checked to be overachieving at over 105%. Um, and so uh, the way this, this provides both uh, confidence to the sales leaders, it pr prompts some interesting conversations if we're either way over forecasting what we roll up compared to what this dashboard says or under forecasting it. And it saves our sales ops teams a ton of back and forth because there's a lot of customization here with our, um, with our parameters. They have also inserted a button that just says, hey, click to enter your sales guidance in Salesforce. It's a URL action that takes us right to where we need to go to actually roll up our forecast. So this saved us just a ton of time um, and um, has made my life way easier as a sales leader. Again, this is in Tableau Public, so you can go download this and reverse engineer it if you would like. 
Uh, this dashboard is, okay, so if we're rolling up a forecast, then we got to understand our pipeline and, and how is it distributed and how is it looking, right? Uh, huge shout out to Ed Barain and David Freifeld. They're actually two sales managers out in our DC office who created this. Uh, so this wasn't built by our sales ops team. This was created by sales managers and it's now been rolled out and is owned by our sales ops team. So that's a big part of our culture is we have KPI reports, we have line of business reports, and we have like an ad hoc discovery sandbox. And we try to promote good content out of the sandbox into the line of business and then eventually to being a, a, a true KPI dashboard managed by our analytics team. This is a great example of that. So the way that I primarily use this is you can filter your, your region, you can you know adjust your stages. For me, I most uh, focus on these pipeline buckets. So we talk all the time about how can we create a, a logical conversation that helps us go from 10,000 to 15,000 or from 50,000 to 75,000. How can we kind of matriculate opportunities through these various buckets? Once we have an understanding of that, it's important to understand who's the primary competitor. That's going to advise us on what kind of plays to run, how they might be messaging against us, how we need to message, maybe what resources we need to leverage. And then I'm always looking at uh, where our opportunities are scheduled to close. So this is a calendar view. I can see um, this is kind of concerning. All of these opportunities, our second most prevalent day is a Saturday on the last day of the quarter. And then the uh, you know, most prevalent day is the Thursday before. So that immediately prompts for me as a sales leader concern that we're pretty back end loaded and how real are those close dates. So I'm going to start talking to my team about ways that we can get a partner in place, maybe a pre-sales resource, kind of what do we need to do to start to facilitate a close that is earlier and natural? What type of expectations do we need to set with the customer around what we can do to facilitate a good experience as we try to close uh, this revenue? Um, so this dashboard, incredibly helpful. Uh, so, okay, if now we're, we've got an overview of our pipeline, right? We understand what we're rolling up as a sales leader. Well, now it's time for the folks on the front lines to go do it, right? It's time for the folks on the front lines to feel uh, empowered, like they actually have an opportunity to go achieve. Um, and so these dashboards are all really near and dear to my heart. Um, there's an example um, in my TC presentation I did, which is in the webinar resources. We dive into this uh, really deeply because we're thinking about how can we save 30 seconds on everything a salesperson does? Uh, Salesforce.com does an annual report. They say 64% of a seller's time is spent not selling. Right? Isn't that nuts? Um, and there's so many things coming at them. So how do we focus on obtaining actionable sales data? Right? We don't want those rogue Excel sheets where I accidentally delete my buddy's leads. Uh, we want to be able to track activity and results and, and overall just improve the efficiency of our workflow. So this first dashboard I want to show you, it's called Who's Hot. Uh, for those of you who like immediately get a call from a Tableau sales rep when you do anything on the website, it's probably from this dashboard. It's a great collaboration with marketing where we can select an account, uh, we can select an individual and immediately send them an email from the dashboard. The bar here is exploring like what is their website activity. So, you know, Captain America, 33 different activities on our website. Uh, they've done about 19 activities with a trial. Um, they've gone to an in-person event, right? So what this helps us do is be much more informed when we are engaging customers so that we can reduce the amount of time it takes for us to have a valuable conversation. All of this has integrations with our CRM where we can go directly into our CRM and start updating uh, Salesforce to make sure that we're managing that aspect of the business effectively. Uh, this is maybe my favorite uh, dashboard example. Um, so shout out to Chelsea Graham and Jarrett Sticklin. Um, they worked with me and with our marketing team. So a huge shout out to Kalen Hallenbrooks over there on marketing, where um, marketing often, they're like, hey, sales, you need to focus on this campaign. And we're like, well, we don't know what to say. We don't feel very confident in what we're going to talk about. So we don't call their leads, right? So what they did was they um, provided examples of talking points. So this links out to talking points so we can get some knowledge of kind of what we should say to the customer. Um, there's blog posts. There's even an email template. And anytime we select uh, a lead, it loads Salesforce.com from within the dashboard. So rather than um, when, when we talk about Tableau, it's often through the vein uh, or lens of like the flow of productivity. Um, or excuse me, the flow of analysis. This is about the flow of productivity. So how can we go through and you know, knock out all of these calls with a compelling talk track really quickly and make sure we're updating Salesforce without having to bounce out to a different tab or without getting sidetracked? Uh, and so uh, we've, we've 
this is just uh, so cool uh, in terms of the partnership between marketing and sales and the ways that we're able to drive a more rich, robust conversation. This embedding Salesforce in Tableau, super easy. It's just a web object. Um, there's actually a rumor that I had learned how to code when we first rolled this out. Not true. Don't know how to code. Uh, it's just a simple web object and a URL action. Um, so the last example I wanted to share is this concept of how to build a workflow. So um, if you're used Tableau for a while or used a BI application, um, everyone has their own workflow. Uh, if you went and pulled 20 salespeople, they'd all have a different way they do their job. And then when you onboard a new person, it's kind of like tribal knowledge as to who should do what, right? So what we um, created was a, a way to just click one of these thumbnails and it loads the dashboard you're supposed to go to. So these are some of the examples we've been over. It's fully interactive. And what this does is if I'm a VP of sales and I'm onboarding a new person, rather than needing to teach them how to build a complex Salesforce report or trying to teach them kind of what dashboard in your version of Tableau server should I go to or whatever system, all you have to do is click the icon, pick your name from a dropdown, and go. You can save these views so it preloads to be filtered to you. Uh, and this has just helped us drive a ton of efficiency in how we set up our days um, and how we get the most out of the content that's already in Tableau. So it's really hard. Like if you send somebody a list of five links, the likelihood they're going to click through all five is low. If you send them one link and there's kind of these invitations to click, we've just seen a huge uptick in the adoption of a lot of the content that we provide as sales leaders through this process. Um, then one last shout out is just for the Tableau for Sales Analytics page. Tons of resources on there. Um, if you're hopefully inspired and thinking, okay, how do I do this? How do I get going? Um, the first thing is dashboard starters out of Salesforce. Salesforce is the most prevalent CRM. Uh, what is so cool about these is if you're using Tableau online, you just log in. If you have the right credentials, we'll load your data into these dashboards. Um, if you're not using Tableau online, you can download these and replace the data source. From my perspective, the most beneficial ones you could focus on if you're trying to consider where should I start with all of these examples would be your top accounts because a lot of sales leaders are focused on account grading, making sure we're focused on the right kind of A, B, or C accounts for the year, uh, and your opportunity tracking. We're a month two of Q1 if you have a fiscal start that aligns at the start of the year. So how do we manage our big deals through these next two months to make sure we actually achieve uh, what we've set out to achieve. We also have a ton of resources. So there's the webinar resources on the left side of the screen here. Uh, click into those. Um, there's tons of, of feedback there. My TC presentation, shameless plug for like the ninth time on this call is in there. Uh, we've got white papers, Harvard Business Review article from our VP of Sales Ops, uh, and then mini webisodes that take a lot of the content you've seen and put them in really bite-sized digestible chunks. So if there's one thing I could leave you with, um, hopefully, is just go try it. Go share your content, but also make sure you have appropriate buy-in from both IT and your sales leadership. Uh, that stat has always kind of been crazy to me that Gartner says 70 to 80 percent of BI projects fail and never leave the pilot phase because you don't have buy-in from the business. So if you're in sales ops, push the business to come with what questions do you need answered daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. And then you can let them know, do we have data to support that? It's not flashy. It just takes a lot of hard work and discipline to stay committed to that. But what we've seen both internally at Tableau and externally is that creates more of a shared common goal. And you start to focus in on amplifying each other's skill sets. Uh, when I started at Tableau, I would have never said I was a data person, but I have a ton of ideas. Sales Ops empowers us with clean data sources and good content for me to go take those ideas and put them into action. Um, and that feedback I give them helps them continue to produce better content uh, and better resources for, you know, for, for, for us. Um, so with that, uh, thank you again for joining. We're going to stay on for a little bit if you have some time around uh, asking and answering some questions. Um, and so we'll, we'll dig into that now. Um, and the first question was, uh, I assume Tableau is data agnostic. Uh, for Brian, 100%. We've got about 60 different data connections. Uh, most, they don't require coding or scripting. You just log in and your data sources are there. Uh, so absolutely uh, data agnostic. We can very likely integrate with whatever data sources that, uh, that you are using. Um, so another question from Grace. How do you integrate all marketing data? So I've got data sources from Google Analytics. Uh, Amazon, et cetera, data is everywhere. How, do we have suggestions on how to integrate them? 
Um, there's a couple uh, suggestions I would have. We have partners like Alight Analytics or Fivetran that have great examples um, of ways to do that. Those are more products. We also have Tableau Prep. I mean, we're, that comes included with the desktop license where you can actually integrate and clean those data sources. Uh, and so uh, our marketing team runs into that same issue of how they support us. And so a lot of that is done by using Tableau Prep to integrate those data sources. Uh, so I'd recommend um, taking a look at that. Ah, uh, I love this question. Um, how long did it take for me to feel uh, comfortable with Tableau? So that's from Kim. Um, I think uh, Tableau, man, it took me maybe a couple months before I was really providing a ton of, of insight into the business um, with it. But I think, you know, what's so cool about it is we're all just naturally investigative, and I think it's more about your mindset when you approach it. Like a lot of people get overwhelmed when they see the blank canvas of Tableau Desktop. Um, but if you think about uh, doing analysis, is kind of like we're back in fifth grade English and we're writing an essay. It's all about what happened, where did it happen, when did it happen, who did it happen to, and ultimately why did it happen. And so when I started thinking about it in that lens, um, it helped me understand what kind of questions I should begin with. Uh, and I think Tableau is often like you're walking up a, a, a path that has a little bit of an incline and then you hit kind of a roadblock where you either need a little bit of training or help to kind of get over the next ledge. Um, and that's where we, we leverage Tableau doctor sessions internally a lot. Um, we have a pretty good center of excellence. And then I just went and reverse engineered a bunch of stuff. Like I would just go download stuff out of public or things that like Andy Kriebel had published just to understand how um, they built it. So I would encourage you to do that as well. Like go find things from Makeover Monday, download it, see how it was built. Uh, that should put you down the right path. Um, is there a way, uh, so salesforce.com live with Tableau, or is there a lag when you update on the fly? So um, we have a direct connection into salesforce.com. Uh, Salesforce has um, an API that limits kind of how often it can be hit. Um, so what we do at Tableau is we mirror our Salesforce data in a uh, database, and then we refresh that um, outside of Salesforce, and then we'll also leverage some of the direct connections with Salesforce. It kind of depends on the use case. So is it live with Tableau? Um, it can be refreshed incrementally when you are connecting into it via our native connector. And then we have some data sources that are pretty near live um, that we we mirror those in a database in order to get that so we're not running into the API limitations that Salesforce uh, has on the direct connect connection. Um, okay, um, let's see here. How did your sales team create that cockpit? Uh, so I, I actually created it. Um, so initially it was just an Excel spreadsheet that had links and we used URL actions. Um, but if you download that sales cockpit workflow, it will actually show you uh, how to recreate it in um, a somewhat uh, simpler fashion. Um, and so it, it was a simple Excel spreadsheet. We just populated links in there. Uh, and then the kind of images on the top are just sheets in Tableau, and they drive those, uh, those integrations. So um, highly encourage you to just go download the, uh, the cockpit. Um, Pat, if you go to my screen for a second, um, I have I just downloaded it into into uh, desktop. You can see here this is the uh, you know a sheet here it just has the image for quota attainment. Dropped like the dashboard name and the link onto it, uh, and then you just drag these sheets in and go set up the actual actions in here. So it's just one hyperlink, and it uh, works for whatever the link is, and it will load it. Uh, good question from Ryan. So if a sales rep completes an activity, like an email, email or call through Tableau, does it get automatically logged into, into Salesforce to the right contact or account? So um, what, the way that we use our integration there um, is more so uh, we use things like ID fields to take you directly to the right lead. So if we use this as an example, when you select Dolan Mayo, it would load Dolan's lead or contact right here in the dashboard so that when you um, call them, you can just log the call from the dashboard. And then we use an email automation tool that, allow, that automatically logs your emails into Salesforce. So that's how we pr automatically get the information into Salesforce on the email side. You still have to enter it in as a rep uh, when you're logging the call, but it at least takes you right to them in order to do it. 
Okay. Um, so the question was kind of what database do uh, we use to mirror our Salesforce data? Uh, so we um, we use a bunch of different databases. So kind of the answer to that is it depends on which team. Uh, we're you know we use a lot of Microsoft SQL Server. I'm really excited about Snowflake just to give them a plug. Um, we've seen a ton of examples of customers getting up to speed really really fast with Snowflake, uh, and they have some pretty cool integrations with applications like Fivetran to meet to mirror data from Salesforce into them. So if you're not sure where to go database wise, you know Tableau integrates with just about everything. Um, and you know so if you already have something like MySQL or SQL or Redshift, we can connect to that. If you're curious about a newer technology uh, like Snowflake would just highly recommend that as well. Um, so question was, can the cockpit strategy work if you're on Tableau Online and not Tableau Public? Yes, 100% can. We use uh, that cockpit example in our own instance of Tableau Server. The URL actions that you use to route it just have to be the URLs within your Tableau Online instance, uh, and that will, um, you know, get it will facilitate uh, that behavior. So, um, okay. Is there a way? Let's see here. Uh, one question was, let's see, is there a way to seamlessly manage Salesforce user permissions without having to build and maintain uh, user filters? Uh, so we have some integrations with Okta. That's what we use internally. We're pretty open at Tableau um, in terms of who can see what inside of Salesforce. So uh, I don't, you know, I would say we have uh, we have ways definitely to do that um, to help manage that. Where we more so look to integrate with what you're already using, so we're using things like Active Directory or Okta or uh, One Login to help manage that. You know, we would look to integrate with that. Um, okay. All right. Let's see. Pat slacking me here. Okay. Um, it looks like we are potentially out of questions, uh, which is great. Uh, thank you for your time. If you have any um, kind of follow-up stuff, feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, and I would just encourage you to uh, Pick a use case you think the business is going to buy into. Find a data source you feel like you can get some quick wins. And then iterate, iterate, iterate. And uh, just be open to share the content you have internally and get that feedback. And uh, hopefully you'll see the same success that we've had internally. Uh, Tableau for me has completely changed the trajectory of my career. Couldn't be more passionate about uh, how it can help sellers do their jobs more effectively. So go for it. Uh, we're all in this together as sellers. And hope you all have a great rest of your day.